back to you when you were coming into the Air Force though and mm -hmm. working. So you're eight. Were you still 18 once I'm you 18 started? 18 at this time. Yep. But like when you actually started working? 18 as well. I turned 19 when I was in tech school. Got it. So okay. the, the timeline of this is uh, I signed that job. The job I ended up picking was a cyber transporter. That's a very Air Force-y way of saying network engineer. Which in English? That means uh, we work with enterprise-grade networking. Uh, all right. I, I English, know. not Japanese. Got Come it. On. Got it. Got it. <laughs> so we make computers uh, talk and share information between one another on an enterprise level, meaning instead mm. of 10 computers talking to one another, we make 200 or 500 computers talk to one now another. Now, how does that work? Like, is that as simple as coding something in there? You use devices like routers and switches to make it work. So we were trained how to do that on an Air Force wide level. So I, my job in the Air Force was to make all the computers on an Air Force installation share information with one another and also share it uh, securely and in an encrypted fashion. Oh, now is this the thing? I think we were talking about this when we were on the phone and you might have mentioned it today. So tell me if I'm way off mm -hmm. base. But you were saying as a part of, the, I think it was this job, you would... It would be a main facet on a day to day where you would be instantly translating radar transmissions from active planes and helicopter Apaches and stuff to be able to have it live stream for the generals on the ground who could view exactly what the pilot was viewing to ensure that any targets that were taken out were what they wanted and give the green light. That job that I did uh, came after my time in the Air Force. Okay. So that's the, I, I skipped ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're more than good. So I was a cyber transporter for about four years in the Air Force. And just to give some context to any military guys that are listening, uh, most cyber transporters they get assigned to uh, air, or excuse me, they get assigned to uh, cyber squadrons or communication squadrons. Okay, these are squadrons that are responsible for exactly what I was talking about, making sure all the computers on an air force base are secure and share information correctly between one another. When I was in tech school and I had orders cut, which is where it's a big deal because you're learning where you're going to spend the next three years of your life, I was assigned to an aircraft maintenance squadron. And I thought it was some mm. sort of uh, mess up on their part. So I, I marched to the uh, marched to the MTL and say, hey, sir, you know, I think there's a problem here. And he says, no, you're going exactly where you need to go. Turns you a written out report like that? Turns out. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. Turns out uh, the assets that I was working on, even though they were cyber assets or communication assets, the Air Force viewed them as mm. aircraft components. And that's unfortunately all I can say about it. But I can say it was uh, an RPA program that I worked and that we worked specifically with uh, collecting intelligence on um, adversaries that at the time w were in the desert. So the global war on terror was still occurring and then uh, near peer threats. So you've had other guests on the podcast that have talked about who those people are, or who those, who those nations What'd are. What you said it was near peer? Near peer threats, meaning threats that are near the capabilities of the United States, uh, but not at the capability of the United States. Oh, I think I follow that. Yep. So we would collect intelligence on them. I did that for okay. three years while I was in the Air Force. And then um, when I got out, I was- Well, wait a second. Let's stay there. I, I want to make sure I get this. So okay. when you're collecting intelligence on them, you're at your desk on the base. Because when you were in the Air Force, that's when you were domestic. And mm -hmm. when then when you were a defense contractor afterwards, that's when you went abroad, right? That's when I stepped overseas. Okay. So when you're in the Air Force and you're working, where, what was your base? So unfortunately, I can't say where exactly. No, okay, no problem. Yep. So some base in the fucking US or somewhere. Yep. And you'd be collecting intelligence. How would you go get that? And what was your role in collecting that intelligence? Our piece of the pie was I was a computer guy. So I would make sure all the, all the computer assets were working correctly. And because they were aircraft components, uh, the training that I received when I was actually in tech school or the, the pipeline where I learned how to actually do this job, um, it was very different for how the Air Force views maintaining communication assets. Meaning the, the, the training mentality that was apparent for most cyber guys was not apparent in the maintenance world. And what I mean by that is the Air Force really cares about how planes are, how planes take off and land perfectly every time. Yeah. Meaning uh, they really care about assets landing and launching perfectly. If that doesn't happen, people start dying. So 
I had to make sure that all the communication assets and all the equipment that I was working on, that it was documented correctly and maintained correctly. That framework was not trained to me in the training that I received in technical school. I had to learn that being in a, in a maintenance squadron. So my piece of the pie was when all these communication assets would break or needed service, I was the person that would actually fix them. I would then hand that equipment off to the ops team. This is the sensor operators, the pilots that actually fly these assets and do the collecting themselves. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.